We're going to be doing a rotoscoping project. Rotoscoping is a technique where people would draw or animate directly onto frames of film and frames of digital video. This has its roots in some of the early Walt Disney material. Almost all animators would get footage of somebody doing a dance and then do their own copy on top of that. That's why you got very lifelike animations in the Fleischer Studios Superman or the early Walt Disney stuff. Some of the more recent rotoscope projects that you might be familiar with include the music video for AHA's Take On Me. This one involves switching between reality and an illustrated cartoon world. And one of my favorite rotoscope projects is a recent Chemical Brothers video called The Darkness That You Fear. This was the true inspiration for the rotoscope project that Bradley and I did. Now, rotoscoping doesn't have to be a very complicated process. In fact, it can be the simplest form of animation if you just wanted to have some sort of drawn effects that interact with your characters, your video. You could very easily create a new track above a video and then using the drawing menu go into the flipbook advance frame by frame and have little energy waves or squiggly lines or whatever sort of abstract effect you want to have come in and out of your video it doesn't have to be as complicated as the old timey sort of redraw a person entirely kind of effects that go back to the very earliest iterations of rotoscoping I wanted to do something with footage that had flaws in it and flaws in my case involved a cluttered background and the fact that we had to clip Bradley's wedding dress onto her to get it to fit. So that clip sticks out in some of our footage. Since there is no automated way to remove a background in Procreate Dreams and you can't import footage that has an alpha, I decided to go ahead and just paint over the background entirely. Much like our colorization, there are parts of the background that aren't moving because I shot this on a tripod. So I'll go ahead and wipe those out and the parts that are close to Bradley where she moves around and interacts with it. I'm going to go frame by frame and paint over them with this solid white. The white is opaque and it's going to stay opaque. I'm using a brush that has kind of a jaggedy edge because I think that's the aesthetic I want to go for with this. Something that's very expressive. Something that absolutely contrasts with a lot of the kind of uh, animated AI filters that you see on apps like Video Leap. I'm also doing this at a lower frame rate than and the colorization for time's sake, for simplicity, but also because I think as an effect, it looks kind of cooler to be a lower frame rate. Once I've masked out everything on this layer just by painting it white, I now have the option to use masks to place effects not only on the white area, but also on the layers below my white area. And these mask options are within the menu when you long press on your track. You'll see you have options for a clipping mask and and a mask it kind of depends on the effect you want to go for but because I wanted to have painterly abstract effects going on these layers I'll make sure all my white is grouped together so it is a single layer on a new track above it I'm going to create these dot patterns and the dot patterns are and so from here it's actually quite a simple process there's going to be patterns that go alongside the white there's going to be textures and patterns that go alongside the video of Bradley and the piano so those will be below my white layer. And then because the color schemes I tend to work with are very blue and gray and not necessarily super poppy. I do want to have an element that really leaps out. I'm also kind of visualizing this as a watery looking effect. I'm going to use watercolor textures on the track that is going to be masked with Bradley and the piano. So I think I'm going to draw a jellyfish and just make a simple frame by frame animation that once I've drawn this, I'll group them, which is this rectangular icon here. I'm going to draw around my group with the app pencil, go into the menu in a long press within that section and group them. And now I can copy and paste my jellyfish effect as frequently as I want to see it within my video. Everything that I want to loop, I'll do as many drawings as are required, and then I'm going to group them, copy and paste. And you'll be surprised. And, <clears throat> and this really allows for some lengthy video making that is creative, but isn't too too labor intensive. I'm not drawing on hundreds of frames. I'm drawing on as few frames as I need for my looping animation. Grouping, copying, and pasting. That's